Now they got my drink ready. Yeah. So everyone's looking at a tank. They don't even know who's here. We'll let them trickle in. Get out of focus. In a second, you'll see someone say, first. First. It'll happen to that big box. This is nice. Nice right setup. There. It's a different setup than last time. No, been doing the same thing for years. Yeah. I just kind of changed the orientation of the table. Okay. Let's see. Nobody knows we're here. Let me jump into YouTube and see if YouTube is paying attention to us. Oh, there's one. See, look, there's a couple. There's a first. I told you you'd see a first. First. All right, so it's working. Yeah. And everyone wants to talk to you. All right, so I'm going to close this again because it's covering everything up. All right, so we're hiding here. You guys are just looking at the reef tank. And uh, what we're going to do today is we are going to talk with Michael Vargas. Come here, Mike. See, Hello. He <laughs> so you see, he came prepared. A dark colored shirt. First time, tip of the yes. day. Yeah. First tip. Even this is a problem in some pictures sometimes. You know, the little reflection of the, the brand on your camera, the thing on your shirt, your wristwatch, your it fingers. All makes a difference. Everything can show up. So one of the, I want to dump, jump right into tricks. I prefer to shoot in a totally dark room if I can. How do you feel about that? In a controlled situation, yes. But when you're out and about, someone's tank, a shop, yeah. you know, obviously. Yeah, a shop, you got reflections. It's hard. You just try to stand in front of the, the window in the background. Uh, yeah, it's just tough. It's, you know it's tough you to work need, around. You need to have, you know that big pop-up green screen? Yeah. You need a pop-up black screen you wear. So as you're shooting, it's following you behind There's you. There's this <laughs> thing you could attach to the camera. It looks like a dome. And yeah. it's a black like foam thing you can yeah. attach to like the glass. Or whatever yeah, yeah, those yeah. Things. yeah, shroud. Yep. And uh, yeah, that would be one step to help deal with reflections. Mm -hmm. We also want to talk about using your, uh, well, I'm going to talk about iPhones because that's what I use. But we can talk about Android as well. And uh, if you know anything about that, do you, what do you use? iPhone ah, and okay. Nikon. You guys are yeah. in trouble. All right, but no, we're going to talk about DSLR first because that is absolutely your bread and butter. Mm -hmm. You do fantastic work. Thank you. Here is something that he brought me, and it is all his pretty pictures all compiled into one collage. Yeah. Oh, I zoom in, little, but it's going to be blurry. See, because invert the over the past two years. It's going to be back here for them to see it. Yeah. <laughs> But no, that's amazing. And that's going to be at Aquashella next weekend. Yeah, I have a big one I'm donating to their raffle. It's a 20 by 20. Um, then you can find the prints on the website over the weekend. I'll, I'll add that on there. Perfect. So what we want to do kind of is just kind of what do you recommend? You know, if you're going to do, does it matter whether it's Canon or Nikon? Uh, no. no. I, I just, I'm familiar with Nikon. It's all yeah. I've ever used. So every time I've done a workshop where I was trying to show people how to do photography, I would show up my Nikon and everyone had Canon. Yeah. I mean, everyone. And they even joked at the end, like, we're going to collect money so we can get you a cannon so you can <laughs> yeah, help us next people time. People give me a hard bad. time sometimes, but no. I just stick with what works, and yeah. it obviously works for me. So I've been in the Nikon camp for a long time, probably since 2009. Yeah. Before that, I had um, Fuji, Okay. and I really liked that. It was an all-in-one camera. And yeah, yeah. Uh, this kind, you know, a DSLR allows you to, it gives you a lot of flexibility. You can change lenses out. You can add different filters. Certain cameras, you know, where it's all in one, you're kind of limited. Sort of like using an iPhone or an Android phone, you are limited to what's in the phone. Plus, we do it, or you can snap onto it with a clip. Yeah, you can almost need all the third-party software and things that adjust the color. And... Right. So, when you're shooting, are you normally shooting? Well, you shoot everything, but what is your preference, coral or fish? Coral. coral. I, I really like coral. I'm getting into fish, but I'd like coral. Coral's where it's at for me, and that's where I'm most familiar my strength is that macro on coral and then if you're trying to shoot pictures of coral do you want all the flow to be stopped in the tank do you not care what so is i your used preference? to want everything completely off and mm -hmm. that was just so there's nothing would move you know polyps so now now i almost i almost prefer a little, a little bit of flow but uh -huh. still you know if i'm really wanting macro super crisp detail then yeah, yeah i want nothing on and still as possible no no movement and if there's no movement does that include your camera would that yes. mean it's on a tripod yes okay so tripod would be or highly recommended very still leaning against the brace or something yeah anything yeah in the past i would put a stack of books on here and put my camera on it i did that before i had a just tripod yeah yeah well yeah. it was just it was so close yeah. the tripod kind of didn't cooperate with mm -hmm. me plus here's another thing if you're taking pictures with a tripod and let's say you're using a countdown timer to really avoid any shake yep if you walk around the tripod, you shake the carpet or the yep. floor, and the camera will move. 
who was it? Justin Justin Spa used to I he used to give me a hard time because I'd be at his facility and don't move, don't walk, and he'd be sitting there like, don't get up and do anything, and he would just freeze, you know. <laughs> yeah, because it shakes yeah. the floor, which shakes the tripod, which yeah. shakes the camera, yep. which shakes the lens. So you want to make sure that everything is nice and tight and not moving, and that's why the walk board doesn't move. Yeah. And putting books on there kind of isolated it in a nice way. Plus, the camera could be close. Yeah. Now, what are the favorite types of lenses you like? What is your one you shoot with all the time? Six for the full frame, it's a sixty millimeter, uh, sixty millimeter macro. Okay. That's my workhorse. For a crop sensor, it's a 40 millimeter, and that's the one that I sold you. Yep. Um, it's the same equivalent, just the, one's a crop sensor, one's a full frame. So it'll give you the same focal range. Um, outside of that, I try to stick to anything under 100, maybe in 60, 70, 80, you know, right around there. You know, I have a, well, the lens is on the camera right now, but I have a, I think that's like a 16 to 200, you know, it's an yeah. adjustable one. Perfectly fine. Um, and that's good for all around when you're just moving and you're going I to mean, shows and stuff. I've shot corals with, uh, I have a, what was it, a 2470. Um, mm -hmm. It's not a macro, but it's a great lens. It's versatile. So it'll get really crisp, sharp images. You don't really need a macro for, you know, if you're standing two feet, three feet away from a coral, you don't really need a macro. Right. Um, it's for when you're really up close to them. Yeah. So when you talk about focal length, how much distance do you want between the subject and your lens? Man, um, well, I've learned the, to work. The, I've learned to work. Sixty, right? I've learned to work around that. So, yeah. if, if it's a very deep tank, mm -hmm. uh, like this one, um, if I'm trying to shoot something on the bottom from top down, right? I'm gonna want a hundred, just because I can get closer to that. More of a full framed picture rather than yeah. a sixty millimeter. You'll get the whole picture. So, like, if I want to do this whole chalice, obviously sixty millimeter, maybe something wider. Yeah. Um, hundred millimeter, really zoom in on that, get the details in there. But you have to back up to make the camera focus sometimes. I find that certain lenses like that one that I'm using on, on this live stream right now, that one, I'm trying to shoot it and it's like, nope. And I have to back up and it's like, okay, now it'll let me. It's so frustrating because of that focal length. It needs to be a minimum distance. So the way around, let me grab it. The work sure. around that for me is I use these little things. They're Raynox. Okay. So 150, that's what I recommend if you were to use it. And then there's a 250. What this does, it enables you to focus much closer than what your lens allows. I need that. Yes, you do. So. <laughs> okay, so it's a magnifying filter, basically. Uh, yeah, it's a little dirty. Can, do you ever well, clean these things? Jeez. I mean, come on. You should. You should. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a little. It's a, a diopter, basically. It amplifies your image a little bit. So yeah. that just clips onto the front of your lens, and you're done. Oh, it's mag. It holds on magnetically, or no? no it's, it's grabbing where the lens cap yeah, grabs. Yeah. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, it's cool. fairly cheap. It's not very expensive, but it's a great tool that I've used I many times. I glue all over the front of this thing. I forgot what I glued on there, but I was using sure it. Your lights. I have a 5X lens, yeah. and you got to be ridiculously close to your subject. Yeah. Not good for corals, but other things like bugs and yeah, all the stuff. Yeah, when you're doing the yeah, yeah. super macro. He yeah. Does, he'll show you like a piece of a microchip or, or whatever that is yeah. you're showing. The it's, it's a dot of a resistor. Call in on butterfly wings. Well, yeah, yeah, it's it's. Crazy it's it's awesome. cool. It's, it's really neat. If you're not following him, you got to follow him. You can find him on Instagram. And my yeah, answer most Michael of, Vargas yeah. photography. Oh man, I'm terrible. Where's my phone? I don't. I Mine's don't. up on the tripod. I can't show you. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm gonna grab that tripod because I want to show you guys something. I'm terrible. Let's see. I'm trying to bump my dog. Okay. Yeah. So M Vargas underscore photography. M Vargas underscore photography. And okay. Then my you got Facebook it on, page. On Instagram. You want to follow his Instagram. That's where the pictures are. There yeah, was, I, I do more. talking on Facebook. No one cares. No, I'm kidding. Hey, well, <laughs> I upload a lot of different things to Instagram, but my photography page is mo mainly all coral, but uh, that's mm -hmm. M Vargas Photography. Nice. You'll find more more uh, diversity on Instagram. So this is a tripod I got. I, I went to someone's house in California. No, I'm sorry, in Seattle. And I saw this thing. I, the bottom's loose. I got to tighten this up. It's irritating my OCD. Anyway, um, this thing right here is super lightweight. It, it's compact. It goes from here to here. I mean, it's just a really short piece. I've extended it to show you guys what it looks like. And it's pretty stable as a tripod. I've used DSLR on here. I've used my phone on here. And when I'm doing things, I can just, I've got multiple adjustments on here. So let me just turn your on the camera is mode. way too clean. Do you even use it? I, all the time. I mean, it's in my pocket nonstop. So if I'm trying to take pictures of my tank, I would want to put this on a tripod, and I don't want these reflections of lights that are happening right here. Let me see if see, I can I zoom in a little bit. I used to just go like this and then take the picture. 
I'm going to cheat here. We're going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to scooch up. There you go. And that's really cool. We're gonna refocus. Looking... That a little looks, dark. Let me see if I can make it brighter. Good. For you guys, all right. That's the best I can do. So, you see these lights right here. One of the tricks to solving this—that's a reflection of these floodlights I'm using for the show. I would go ahead and raise my tripod higher to ditch those lights at the top, and then of course I can tilt my tripod. Eh, it's just a matter of finding out what works best. For... Oh, I probably moved right out of the frame. I sure did. Let me move this down again. Sorry, guys. <laughs> But you want to look at, ooh, we have got all the reflections going on here. Yeah. That's okay. Here, I'll do this. But I wouldn't want this to happen. So I would adjust my phone to not let that happen because it ruins the shot. You want to make sure it's nice and level. And then when I'm trying to shoot something, I don't want to do this. I don't want to zoom in maximum. Yeah, you should just go like that. No, I got to block Grab this. some cardboard and you cover that light. Let me uh, back up for a second so you can show what you meant. Yeah. Oops, hang on. There we go. Yeah, so you... Like that. Can you find the spot? Maybe. <laughs> a little rusty. Where is it? There's one. And yeah. You do the, yeah. They're huge well, lights. Yeah, you get the us. idea. Yeah. yeah but It'll you, work. Do whatever it takes. That's one way. So, but when you're but, doing anything, when I'm doing this and I'm working on the, the tank itself, I want to just take the picture the way it is. So what I'll do is I'll touch it. And if I want, I'll touch and hold it. And now I've got it locked and I can bring it down a little bit to kind of darken it just a little bit. Now there's no filter or clip on here. This is just the naked phone. Now, if I want to make it brighter, I just raise it up and make the tank a little brighter. And then, of course, if you want to zoom in, you can. But I was telling you before, I don't recommend zooming in like this because it won't look good. It'll be it'll be blurry and pixelated and kind of garbagey. So instead, it's much better to move your camera much closer to the reef, take a regular shot at the regular status. And then when you've got the picture saved, you can then edit that picture and make it a little more zoomed in. So don't zoom first, crop it down from the really good picture. Because like every picture that the iPhone saves is something stupid like 15 to 24 megs. It's a big file. So you have a lot of data you can work with. Now one thing that would help a lot right now is if my lighting wasn't in the blue spectrum. So let me change that for you guys. Put a filter. You can use a filter, but if you start by adjusting your lights in the first place, yeah. it'll make a difference too. I got to round that. I used to do that a lot. Okay, so he's figuring out the filter on there. Did you get it? Oh no! no. All I, mean, right. you, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to mess okay. that up. You're fine. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to change my camera to streaming for you guys first of all. That's cool. And now my lighting has changed on the tank. That looks let me, good. Let me make sure this is in focus. I can get the guy out of focus. Man, I need to come over for lessons from you. <laughs> <laughs> well, for phones, I've got it. For the DSLR, I'm so frustrated. Now that's a good spectrum. But you see, that spectrum right there works for everything you're trying to do, and it's going to be easier for editing later if you want to make some corrections. Um, if I'm doing video, I might want to come down with it a little bit, a little bit lower. Uh, I'm trying to get out of the frame for you guys so you can see. But I do want to go ahead and lock in my autofocus so that if a fish swims by, it doesn't change the focus point. Yeah, that's good. And that way, I can again, I can control the brightness. See, I usually shoot a little bit darker. Yeah, I like to darken it just you a little get bit. Some of the highlights and the blowouts on the corals. Exactly. You can bring that back a lot easier if it's darker. But once it's blown out, right. it, you can't really, yeah. And then being on a tripod, I can just hit record and get a nice clean recording versus if I'm holding it, my hands are going to be shaking just as I breathe. And it's going to, the camera makes some corrections for you moving, but it's still better to just stabilize it as much as possible. But since, you know, we're showing you a demo of photography. I'm going to stay away from video for the moment. I hate that I have these little lights here. I mean, I wouldn't let that happen. I would make the room dark. And that way my tank would be lit up perfectly and I wouldn't have these weird reflections. Mm -hmm. But it is nice to be able to go in there and find what you're looking for specifically. And then, of course, if you have this on a tripod, you can adjust it. There's certain things you can do. Like if you wanted, you could do a panoramic picture by just loosening the pivoting point of your tripod. And then you could actually take a picture this way, pivoting across the tank. And it'd be pretty stable. You know, when you go on a panel, it always says to you to go ahead and, you know, it's showing you the arrow. There's a way to trick this into going horizontal, too. But as you're doing it, you would just move your way slowly, 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 and just let it build a really nice picture that you've pivoted on your phone. And that's one way to get a nice photograph that I like to do. Um, nice. Now, I want to ask you, because on all of your lenses, you have that orange filter to kind of cut out the blue in the first place, right? Yeah, the re kind of depends on the tank too. Like right here, I, I don't need it. Here. You wouldn't need it on this no. one, not in this mode. 
I mean, I'd say 90, maybe 80% of the time, really, I'm using uh, Kelvin. I shoot in Kelvin now. Mm -hmm. um, the way the lights are now. A lot of people don't run those solid, straight 450 in and blues anymore. Right. Um, so you can get away with using Kelvin a lot more. Um, kind of just depends on what you want to do. Do you want to spend time editing or do you want to spend time not editing? You know, it's yeah. like try to get it as close as possible in camera. You know, just it depends on what you want to do. I mean, well, the first step of me changing the color of the tank was really important. And I feel like that is the first step to save you time for later. If you've already cut out some of the blue in the first place, yeah. you'll end up with a nice picture right out of the camera without any effort. If you have the blue in there, you've got to deal with pulling the blue out. But some blue is okay. It's not an evil color. It's just not great for the iPhone. For a yeah. DSLR, it can handle it better. And if you're shooting in RAW... See, I'm in Kelvin right now. You I'm can edit a, it down. Um, 6250. Mm -hmm. ISO is 500. Shutter sure speed is 100. And f-stop is 7.1. Do you hear all that? That's the secret. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I, like I remember it. my friend took a picture of a fish once. Uh -huh. She was a good photographer as well. And we were looking at the same tank, and she made it where the fish appeared, but all the background was black. And I was like, how did you do that with your camera? I was so amazed, and it had to do with f-stop and shutter speed. Yes. Uh, lower f-stop, you'll get much more blur in the background, but yeah. less of your subject and focus depending on focal plane. So if it's a perfectly flat subject, yeah, like it'll all perpendicular be, to yeah. the lens. It will be, uh, everything will be in focus. Yeah. Uh, if it's not like a ZOA, for example, I hate photographing those because they're you, always, you got to figure out what you want to photograph the yeah. skirt, the center, the mount, every, you know, it's different, but um, that also will help with blacking and out the background. Well, let's take your example of a ZOA. When you're looking through your camera and you're focusing, what are you focusing on? The front pedals or do you focus on the middle? Where is your target to start the focus? On a Zoa, I'd say the center. The center. Um, yeah, the, unless it's a really interesting skirt, mm -hmm. I'll focus on that. Um, but that I'm probably at like f on a sixty millimeter. I'm like at f um, f f eighteen right around there. If yeah, about f. f That's 15, a big number. Yeah. That's a big big number. High ISO so. to bring out. You know, it's be very dark. So yeah. Um, if not, use a lot of light, light supplemental light. So. Yes. And that's the other thing, because <clears throat> I was going to tell you, even off camera, that everything I take, it seems to be dark. And I have my, I actually set my monitor to like 50% brightness, so yeah. I kind of can see what it looks like. And then I look on Facebook and it's so dark. I'm like, man. There's a trick. And I think I'm losing some light to that filter. Well, there's a trick, though. Like, so when you're on your computer editing, um, what did I read? I just did this recently and it helped me out. Is hold a white sheet of paper next to your monitor. Yeah. And try to match that brightness. Ah. Oh. That should be pretty accurate to okay. what you when you upload it because every monitor is going to be different, but that'll yes. be pretty accurate. All know. right, because I took pictures of Caitlin's tank and it was really dark last. Night. I was like, God, that one looked decent on yeah. my screen, but I have a 5K monitor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's part of the problem that every picture I look at when I zoom in on it, it looks like garbage, See, and I hate all I my photography. I, I, I'm going to stick with my I think very it's the good monitor. cheap monitor because yeah. everything will look good to me. Oh. Let me. Um, I'm going to open up. Photoshop in the background, so it's just ready for us. So okay, yeah, let me snap. Uh, I like this fish. Yeah, you snap a shot. We'll see. Yeah, your f-stop. Um, flash will help too. So if you're using flash, I like flash photography with fish using a diffuser. Um, I use a mag mod, so I can just hold it with a trigger and kind of put it where I want and take the picture. Uh, you'll see some pictures in Coral, next Coral. <laughs> the processor. <laughs> Let me see what I can do here to salvage some memory. And then... Okay, so Photoshop is gradually loading in the background. Um, I did want to mention, because people were going to say, well, you didn't say where you got this. So this piece right here, it's by a company called Shoulder Pod, and... When I got this, it had a strap to put around your wrist and a little post on the bottom. But you can take all that off and set it right on the tripod mount of a tripod. And so I found this to be super practical and I use it all the time. But if you want to be freehand, if you had all the components, you would basically be holding the camera like this, you know, generally speaking like this and walking around filming like at a, a Mac now or Reefapalooza or, you know, whatever kind of show you like to go to or you're out in the park and you 
a lot of people film vertically, and I always tell them film horizontally. This thing helps you stay horizontal. I was watching someone's video just a couple of days ago, and he was filming vertically, and all the action was happening on both sides of the camera, so he kept moving the camera back and forth. I'm like, God, if you had just pivoted, we'd see it all in one frame. It would have been perfect. So this is a brand, like I said, shoulder pod. There's lots of stuff out on the market. If you bought a ring light, you know, the big circle, like a lot of people do for, you know, taking selfie vlogs and stuff, sometimes they have the clip built in. It's not as good as this one. I like this one a lot, and uh, it's done a really good job for me. And then, like I said, I can just go ahead and I can adjust this tripod. I can pivot the camera very easily and smoothly, which I really love. And then I really like this one because I can pivot it any direction possible. You can even have it shooting straight down if you wanted to shoot something that's working and you're trying to do a demonstration. If you have the room to set up this tripod, you can have the camera pointing straight down at the subject and you can do a demonstration. So it's a very practical tripod. This one is Dolica, D-O-L-I-C-A. And um, I think it's from Proline. So it's made of carbon fiber. It's super lightweight. I really like it and I, I haul it with me everywhere. <laughs> so I do recommend that to everyone. Um, just to have any, and you want a tripod that is stable enough that it won't shudder when you're doing things, but lightweight enough that you don't regret bringing it. Like the tripod that you're on was given to me as a gift from a friend. She called it Big Bertha, and she hated taking it to all of her photo shoots. So she gave it to me, and it just sits here in the living room, and it works great for the live stream, but it's, um, it's too clunky and big, and you can't make it nearly compact enough to fit in your luggage. So that's why it's here at my house. It's good. So he's taking pictures of fishies, and then he's going to demonstrate to us how to edit a picture and possibly like black out the background or something. Um, on fish, I shoot in continuous focus, so I have a I set it up to back button autofocus. Mm -hmm. What memory card are you putting that on? I just uh. It, you have like a big card, oh, not the small one, right? Yeah, I got to transfer it actually. Yeah. Because we got to put something that fits into my computer. Yeah, I have an X. Or you got to edit one of my ugly pictures. I can I can do that. I can edit yours. <laughs> Do I do that? Hey, it doesn't matter. Right. Whatever's, 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 whatever's. Let's see if we can find some of my files. Sure. Uh, how do I get to anything here? Just do open. Can they, so they, can they see Photoshop? They will. They will. Oh, I'll okay. switch it. Right now they're looking at the tank. Gotcha. Let's see. Um... Ooh, that's a nice one. Oh, I want to tell you about something I did yet. Did you see my pictures on Facebook yesterday? Uh, I don't no, I wasn't really on it much okay. yesterday. So I shared this yesterday. Let me grab my phone so I can do a quick little fake demonstration for you. If your phone is sitting next to you on your chair and you look at it, you'll see a reflection of your reef in the glass. So yesterday I took these pictures of your phone of the, of the reflect reef reflecting off the, the lens of the or off the uh, whatchamacallit. And That's these cool. are all NEF files, so it's gonna take a minute to load. But I was trying to capture that, and I'm like, "You should totally do this because you'll nail it. You'll make it perfect." That's really neat. Yeah. So when I'm sometimes the bugs that I do have that black reflection is they're on a screen like that. Yeah. My iPad a screen or a phone screen. Yeah. yeah. Yes. There you go. Yeah. Or an it's, iPad. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's perfect. So getting that reflection of the reef, the reef looks better. It looks darker, <laughs> and it's just so amazing. On Gotham, Gotham City. You just got back from Cof uh, Comic Con, right? Right. Yeah. How was that? That was a good time. I'm going to switch this to you guys can, so you can see what we're looking at here. So we're going to switch to Photoshop. Oh, that's a good picture, too. Oh, nice. He's doing so good. All right, guys. So we're going to look at, will this work? I don't know if they're seeing that. They're seeing the wrong thing. I need them to see my little finder window, I think. Switch it to current application. Then we'll do this. So here's a reflection happening. Actually, it would be nicer if I just gave them the freaking image. Let's do this. <laughs> there we go. So there you can see my iPhone is right here. My iPad is behind it. I set them on the table. And then I did a reflection of the reef above. And I focused on the reflection itself instead of on the tank. And the tank became in focus as well, which was a nice artifact or side effect. Here is another one I did. And... And here's one of just the iPhone itself. And you can see the tank reflecting it. And I've noticed this many times. I'm just watching TV and I look down at my phone and there's a reflection of the reef. I'm like, oh, those corals look so good at this crazy, ridiculous reflected angle. I love it. Neat. So I wanted to show you guys that. And I know that I've seen oh, people do some really amazing stuff. 
So here we are. Like lens. I said, we're in Photoshop. So can they see just Photoshop or this this tank and Photoshop or? What do you mean? Like, can they see what else is going on or just Photoshop? It'll just be Photoshop right I now. I got gotcha. Yeah, this is neat. I like uh, this little reflection idea. Let's see what I can do here. So there's, this is a picture I took yesterday. And like I said, it was too dark. It should have been brighter. But then the sand would have looked washed out. Perfect. You can edit that. So, okay. Let's, let me find that one. Let's see. I think it's somewhere in the middle here. See, here's a close-up of bad things happening in my tank, y'all. Or let's see. Uh, what else do you have in there? It's really minor. Um, here's her tank, I think. Here's your anthids. That's a good, that would be a good one, actually. Yeah? You want to start out with a little bit of a darker background. If you have a very bright background, it's harder. Let's see if this works. I I'm, clicked I'm it. hoping your version of Photoshop is set, or I'm just hoping it's set up like mine. If not, it might be lost. Uh, why did I click learn more? Big mistake. I don't care. Close this. Mm -mm -mm. Um... You don't want to get started. Just click your thing, whatever you have to do here. All right, so here is most of your screen. I'm going to shrink this down a little bit so that way my little boxes aren't completely in your way and you can kind of see what you're doing. You know, another thing I do is uh, I have a monitor calibration tool. Mm -hmm. so I don't know if you have one of those or not. I do not. Okay, that's, that's something that's very helpful to me. It's helpful for printing, too. Um, but, yeah, looking at this, it just, to me, it looks... Um, I mean, I'm not going to go into too much color grading, but it looks kind of maroonish, reddish. I would, yeah. I would fix that. But anyway, just, just to save time, um, let me see. What is this? Photoshop? This? Oh, Photoshop. this is light. This is light, uh, raw. Okay, raw. Yeah. Um, gotcha. All right, we'll remove the background. We'll do something like that. Okay. We'll do some cool stuff. So, ISO. Let me double check something before you keep going. I forgot. I'm sorry, I knew I'd do it. Jackie, you can't be Come under on. our feet. Sorry. All right, sorry, guys. All right. There's that. Jack, you're right? Yeah. There you oh, go. Look, she's going to love on you oh, now. Oh, yep. She, all right, cool. It's okay. Come on, Jackie. Yeah, I know. Come on, let's get out of the way. Come on, let's go to the bedroom. Go, go on, go to the bedroom. <laughs> there you go. Go somewhere what? safe. Okay. All see. right, so this is your thing you're working in, and that's what they're seeing. Your mouse is All right. Um, does, it, does it work? Come on, get it. Man, this is weird. Do you have get a mouse it. pad or something? or? No, I do not have a mouse oh pad. Do you God. need a mouse pad? No. What about a sheet of paper or a magazine? No, this works. I'll just deal with it. Okay. I don't think I own one, to be honest. All right. Um, so highlights. Let's, let's adjust the highlights. What I'll do with the highlights is it basically brings out, if you notice the green in the center, mm -hmm. yep. that's all I'm focused on. I don't care about the rocks or anything else. They can right. see my finger pointing, so i got to do a better job at it. Talking. But yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll lower that a little bit. Okay. I don't touch saturation, vibration, dehaze I used to do, but mm -hmm. it adds a black cast over the whole image. So I really don't mess with that too much. Yeah. Uh, but I do put that back to zero. Uh, but blacks, I'll adjust that a little bit. At the top, I'm seeing the histogram, and I see how you're kind of, as you're I, working, it's moving it over a little bit. I pay My no stuff's attention. always jammed in the left, which means there's not enough light on the I subject. I pay no attention to that. All right. Yeah. Shadows, really don't have to mess with shadows much. It just depends on the picture. Here, yes. here it's just the exposure, um, the highlights a little bit, just to bring it down. Um, Really, that's it. Then you got to open. Let's have a little bit of fun. Okay. I'll do two different ways. So I'll I'll clean up the background, yeah. and then I will remove it completely. All right. So this is... Can I maximize this? Uh, I think so, but you'll just end up with a lot of stuff from the... Um... I got you. Okay. As long as they can see it, right? I think they can see all of it, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, first things first. Let's just clean it up. So okay. let's go to our um, clone stamp. Okay. Clone stamp. Man, this mouse is throwing me off. Sorry. Hardness. Okay, the hardness is going to give you... So if it's really hard, it's like... I'll just show you. Um, what the heck? So it'll just put a solid circle. I don't know if you can see that. All right. Um, but if it's soft... It's more of like a blend, like a little... Yeah. You know, it's, it's a little bit better. Anyway, so... That's what I would use to clean up the background. Um, you can use a healing brush. Healing brush is good too. I like the clone stamp most of the time. Okay. Uh, dang it, dang it, come on. There we go. <laughs> All right, so we'll take out that. Easy. Kind of do that for the whole image. Yeah, just get rid of the little. Oh, uh, those are, uh, that's on your screen. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I was like trying to realize what's going on. Yeah, so you can get rid of that. Little little imperfections. Mm -hmm. How do you zoom in? I have a mouse wheel on my own. Uh, I think two fingertips. 
Am I lying? I don't know. Show me your strikes. What'd you do? Uh, command plus. Where's your plus? Command and plus sign. Oh, I got you. Oh, okay. See, it's out of focus and it looks pixelated. <laughs> um, so on this too, like, if I'm going for something super, super clean and I'm being very strict with the photo, yeah, I will remove something like this down here. I don't know what that little white dot is, but mm -hmm. we'll get rid of that. Um, as a photographer and when I'm photographing people's tanks and systems and corals, yeah. they want the best image possible and I have to deliver that. A lot of times if it looks like it could be something like a bug or anything like that, mm -hmm. Even if it's not, I still remove it because I just don't want people to focus on that rather than the image. Right. So I try to keep it, you know. Um, Make the subject the focal point. Yeah, right. I don't want them distracted with all these little tiny, you know, imperfections. And yep. They could be like, oh, that's a bug. No, it's just <laughs> it's, it's a rock or something. Yeah. Dang, this is weird. All right. I feel like I'm moving much slower than. Um, I'll give you an idea on that. Healing brush, so. I just already cleaned up the background. The background's not really too bad in this picture. Oop, that wasn't good. Um, we'll go to the healing brush, show you what that does. Um, so with the healing brush, you can kind of lock in on one area, which is good. Let's make this soft. Hardness is zero. So here, there we go. Uh-oh, what did I do? Oh yeah, you can see what the spot healing brush does. I don't know if you've ever used it. But I have not. There you I'm, go. I'm a Lightroom guy mostly. I do mm. very little in Photoshop. Yeah, it's more. Why is it? Uh, it's more. Uh, why won't it do it? It'll heal. Oh. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Put that button in the zero. So let's get rid of that. We can get rid of this little yeah, that whatever. Hazy part. Yeah. Let me get smaller. There we go. So do you have to sample that area first before you start healing it to make it yes. blend better? Yes, it samples the color from the from the local in area. The general area, yeah. Yeah. And if you overdo it. You see what it does? Yes. It? Yeah. So you don't want that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you can't do that. Basically, yeah, this picture is really not bad as far as... I guess. See, that's a big area. So if you're trying to get rid of that, you're mm -hmm. really just blurring it. All it's going to do is smooth it out so much, but yeah. it, you're still going to have a little bit of... Something was there. Yeah. So yeah. that's something like that. I would use a clone stamp. Okay. Get rid of that. Plus, you can always go back over it later. And, yeah. Gone. Magic. Gone. I think we'll leave that. I wanted to be real picky. Mm -hmm. So you could go. Let's see. Um, opacity will change that to 20 ish, 28. So what that does is, is when you clone stamp, um, you'll have to. I'm trying to see how you explain it. You'll have to go over it several times to really get it to clone if not it's like a very light copy so for example you see how it barely did anything yes you do it again it'll do a little bit more mm -hmm. you know so you can kind of blend and merge things a lot easier so what i was saying on um, if i want to be real picky then i would get rid of this you know light haze here yeah because it doesn't look like the rest of the background right so kind of i mean it just depends on how much time you want to spend on the picture I mean, right just, this used to be me, like, all the time. And <laughs> yeah. I've gotten good enough to where I've, I I know how to set it up. And, you know, it makes life a lot easier. There's so a guy out of California. That. He does all this on an iPad, and I cannot believe it. I do it on an no iPad. No mouse. No, not iPad. I have a Mac. Yeah, I use a little tiny Mac laptop. Yeah, but you're using a mouse or, or a stylus or something. He's doing it with his fingertip on the I've touchpad. Gotten, I've gotten good without a mouse, though. Because, you know, flying and you do it on a plane. Yeah. And, um, let's get rid of this. I guess that's algae down there. Let's see, whatever that is. Let's get that junk at the bottom. It's probably a blob of glue. Get rid of oh, my opacity is down. Let's get rid of that. 
Um, and I'm very bad with like the technical names and terms of stuff, so mm -hmm. I don't, I apologize, I don't know what stuff is really called or how it works. Mm -hmm. You just know what to touch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just sort of me and Lightroom, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Now you see I have the harsh lines, you know, you can see where the color didn't quite blend. Right. I go back up to my healing brush and I'll blend it. Uh, let's see, that's good. It samples that area of color and blend. Blend. That's good. I like that. I mean, I guess on average, I could spend five minutes on a picture or I could spend an hour. It just right. really depends. I, I remember spending a really long time with one picture of my NASO, mm -hmm. of Spock. Yeah. She had like a million dots all over her body from the flow. And I was like, I'm going to delete all those dots. And it was a thousand healings. Yeah. And it took forever. But I was, and you know, when I was halfway done, I did the thing where you get rid of all the markers on the screen. I was like, yep, it's working. Yeah. And then I continued and I got the whole, it, it was a solid hour. But I liked the picture of the fish so much, I decided to really work on making the image better. Yeah. That I can live with. So we'll create a layer. And we, the reason why we create a layer is you don't want to edit the actual picture. You just right. create a copy of the picture and we'll go to, there's, what is that? There's a screen that comes up here. Do you know the, the, the uh... Talking about this one up here? Yeah, okay, sorry, yeah. Um, uh, filter, we'll go back in the camera raw filter. Okay. And that layer, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just fix the background a little bit more. Okay. But with that, what I'm gonna do is. Wow, look at that, it was so easy. So you can do that, <laughs> that, that. <laughs> That there's more to it, so yeah, yeah, yeah. This is just cleaning up the background, I'm not it removing sure it did, quite yeah. yet, but we'll go just a shadow a little bit, mm -hmm. and then we'll go. I mean, you kind of just got to play with everything, they all do something different, right? Um, uh, we'll okay, <clears throat> now here's where it gets cool. So, because it darkened everything mm -hmm. and not you know just the background, yeah, I'll go down here. Uh, I forget what this is called. Uh, there you go, layer mask. We'll create okay. a layer mask, yeah, uh, we'll do command I, okay, that hides it, all right. You go to your, uh, I think it's, no, there's another one. Well, maybe it is. History brush. Mate, no. It's not, there's another, there's another pen. Pencil too? No, I don't think it's pencil. It might be pencil. Let's see. No, it's definitely not. <laughs> um, brush tool. All right, we'll go to brush tool. Um, zero. Let's just do that for now. Oh. All right. So I hid the layer, and I will. Um, basically, what it's doing is poking a hole through the layer that I created. So. Yeah. So now I go back and I can add that uh, background that I cleaned up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Back there, so it darkens it a little bit. I just go around the zoas. And mm -hmm. it just knows to cut around those? No, I'm, I'm doing that. I am. You're going around yeah, it? Yeah, I'm basically pasting Because of the layers. It. Yeah, so the layer, if I hide the layer. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. So really, yeah. I don't want to darken the zoas. Right, of course. That was what I was thinking. I'm just trying to clean, them, clean up the background, mm -hmm. you know? And that's kind of what I would do if I'm just wanting to keep the background and clean it up. It's a very tedious process sometimes. Yeah. Basically, that's it. There you go. I mean, done. I mean, that's cleaned up. I would crop it a little bit. Um, yeah. Now let's just flatten that layer, and then we'll do something different. Okay. Um, layer mask. Let's flatten that. Now, another way, a quicker way, if you just want to completely remove it or you mm -hmm. just want to change the color of the background, is really cool. Um, let me find your tools. No, that's cropping. No, I don't want to crop. Where is that? The lasso? Where's the lasso tool? Do you know the lasso tool? Right is? there. That one. It's not a lasso. It's a magic lasso, right? Magic wand. Oh. Where's your magic wand tool? Hmm. Hmm. I thought it was in lasso. You got a magnetic lasso. Lasso's just cutting it, like if you want to cut it out. Yeah. 
I'm looking for a, it's a point and click. It's a magic wand tool. Magic wand tool. There you go. Okay. All right. Um, tolerance. We'll do the lower the tolerance, the more it's going to. Um, <clears throat> so if you have a very low tolerance, it's not going to get in between all the little tiny details and stuff like that. But, okay. So usually sometimes if you have a high tolerance, it'll pick up inside the coral. So it's, it's a, kind of a balance you have to find. Okay. Uh, I use this often. There you go. So you just click a button, highlight everything. We'll go to, um, let me find it. Um, okay. So you highlight it, right? Yeah. You go to your select inverse. It's going to inverse that image. Mm -hmm. And you go to select and mask. You click OK. And then you add a layer mask. And then you can put any background you wanted. There you go. So what you could do with this, you could take this and move it. And yeah. paste that onto a, I don't know, anything you want and create a t-shirt, a hat. I was going to say yeah. a postcard for Aquashella. <laughs> yeah, you can do a lot. Like, so that that picture I gave you, this is what I used to do that. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so we got that. So um, you can go to layer, go to a uh, new fill layer, solid mm -hmm. color. We'll just do black. Okay. There you go, solid black background. Yeah. You know, and you can go over here and clean it up. Um, go to your eraser tool. Now, in this case, this is pretty simple because there was nothing in the background to deal with. Yeah. It was literally just. I mean, we can open up opaqueness. one with a brighter background, and I'll show how that works. I mean, well, that's... I was just thinking if there's any kind of crap in the background, like there's a half of fish, there's you know some rock, you know yeah. all these things. You literally have to like clone them all out first before you can get to this stage, right? To do the inverse. Not really. I mean, this is Classroom. when you do this inverse thing. It's really neat because you know, for example, I just removed that. So if that yeah. was a fish, you can just erase it before you flatten your image. Um, yeah. Um, okay. That's kind of real. I mean, you can, and you, it's cool because you can go in here and if you want a more blue background, you could go, let's see, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. There you go. It looks so much better. <laughs> you made my uh, horrible picture a little uh, bit better. Filter. We'll, uh, <laughs> and I know we're not working with the world's best picture either. We just grabbed anything off my hard drive. We'll flatten that. We'll crop it a little bit. There's um, a reason this wasn't on my, wasn't posted. Reset. I like, when I crop it, I'll do <laughs> crop box original size and resolution. So it doesn't okay. really lose much. Yeah. Uh, we'll follow the rule. Mm -hmm. The rule of. Uh, Thirds. Yeah. Something like that. There you go. Now, um, I don't know. I, I mean, I could go on for days. So let's do create another layer. Let's, let's do something really neat. So okay. we'll do dodge and burn. All right. Dodge and burn is cool. So we go to create layer mask. We'll go in here to screen. Let's see what screen does. Screen, screen. Look at that. Screen. See how it brightened up everything? Yeah. Kind of cool thing. We'll create a layer mask and we'll hide that. We'll go to our brush tool. I do this with a lot of fish too, because like it's the lighting's almost never perfect on them. Yes, and you need the fish to be brighter. <clears throat> the underbelly, just certain things. You don't want yeah. the pace to be one hundred. You want to have to, you know, you kind of want to work at this. So we'll, we'll, we'll darken it. Um, yeah, you see what this does. I can't more. tell. <laughs> very, very slight. You don't want to do too much. Too oh, I much. see. Now there I you see go. It. You brighten it up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So to kind of make the rock appear. Yeah, it's almost like you photographed it that way. And this is dodge? Dodge and burn. Okay. Yeah. See, I wasn't very clean with it. You can kind of see where I went over the blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, whatever. You get the idea. Yes. Um, you also do it the other way. So we'll flatten that layer. That I kind of do it. what you're describing inside, photo, inside Lightroom pretty regularly. Okay, yeah. Um, we'll go to multiply. Multiply darkens it. So we will create a layer mask, hide it, and we'll poke holes through it. We'll do the highlights of the Zoas. Let's change that. Too dark. We don't want that. We want 50 ish. Yeah, that's pretty good. I guess so. You know, so you can kind of play with the highlights of the image, different things. If you want to add contrast mm -hmm. and make it appear darker in the bottom, mm -hmm. really kind of manipulate the way that looks. You know, add a shadow, brighten up shadows. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, kind of there you go. I mean, yeah, big difference. It actually looked better darker, believe it or not. I was like, first I was like, I don't well, like yeah, this, but the, then I saw it. Now I you like, see oh, that like you it. take the, the, adjust that, take that away, and it's like, oh, it looks, yeah. you know, blown out a little bit. It does, yeah. Yeah, I'm always hyper aware of that. I yeah. try to always take out anything that looks blown out. Yeah, open up one of, uh, do something with a brighter background. We'll mess with that. Let me find you a different picture. We'll see. All right, guys. Yeah. 
Any like questions? I don't know. Let's see. They're just watching. Okay. They're very quiet today. <laughs> Probably because you're here and they're being on their best behavior. <laughs> uh, if they're following along, I'm sorry if I'm not going slower or faster. I, his mouse is throwing me off. Yes, I have a magic mouse. <laughs> and then, yeah, it's just different. Uh, you want something with some kind of background. Yeah, we'll just remove it. i got to find you a, a remotely usable picture. That's the problem. All my stuff's so hyper-focused on a certain thing. Do that one. Go back. We'll you like just, that one? We'll just do that it's one. It's a horrible okay, picture. Okay, fine. Pick a different one. Let's go. Do, hold on, let's see what else you have. Let's open with... Are you sure? Yeah, let's see what else you have. Okay. Can they see you choosing? Yeah, yeah they, they see, see me choosing. They see it all. They're very aware. That would be a good one. Right? This one? What do you think? All right, let's open with Photoshop. That'll be a pain in the ass, but yeah. <laughs> That'll keep you busy for 10 minutes. Let's see. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do with this And now is... you're on that raw editor, right? Yeah. So you want to start with that. First thing I'm going to do with this is just the highlights because this is blown out. Yes. That's blown. The green's blown. Up here. It's not even in focus. No, that's fine. So we'll just the highlights. We'll bring that down. We can always bring it back up later. Yeah. Um, shadows. You can kind of mess with that if you want. Mm-hmm. Kind of really, that's it. So This is my 18 to 200 lens. That's why the corners have that bokeh. It's literally through the filter. Yeah. I had to zoom out slightly to make that not happen. On this image, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if they can see it. I, I did a little bit of a haze to it. Mm -hmm. So that's when you'd want to use your dehaze. Yeah. Cause you I can use really, dehaze a lot. I like it. You can really see how much of a difference yeah, it Yeah, it made a big difference just doing that a little bit now before yeah. we even got to editing. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. All right. Cool. We'll leave it at that. Open. Mm, yes. All right, first thing I'm going to do is go to my magic wand, and mm -hmm. I'm going to change. So I'll show you the difference. Let's okay. put the tolerance at five. Okay. It doesn't grab much. No. One pixel. Yeah. <laughs> Ten will grab a little bit more. Yeah. But you, you know. It's just patchy. I've yeah. had that happen to me before. So we will do 50 and okay. see what happens. There we go. Now right. you hold down shift. Yeah. And you can select more areas of the image. Oh, I see. You're adding extras to the original. Yes. Got it. Um. And you can also change it. So say you're holding down shift and you can, you know, say it grabs too much of a coral. Like I think it might have grabbed. Yeah, see, it grabbed this. So yeah. we will go back. Oh, there you go. And we will hold down shift. Mm -hmm. I'm going to change this to, I don't know, 20. And grab around that coral. Why are you doing that? Invalid number. What are you talking about? I was at 20. Hold down shift. There we go. Oh, All right. right, now I can grab smaller areas. <laughs> yeah. Not so bad. Right. Um, let's go back out. Boom, boom, boom. And you really don't have to select everything. I'll show right. you in a minute. All right. Um, we go to what I do. Select inverse. Select and mask. Hit OK. Create a layer mask. There's your image to work with. Get mm -hmm. your eraser. We don't really need anything up top. Oh, we don't have, we're actually on the original. We're not on the next layer, oh. right? My, no, yeah, that's right, yeah. Is that correct? Okay. Yes, Keep okay. Going. Anyway, so we don't want none of this stuff up top. It's right. a distraction. We're going to get rid of it. Looks so much better already. It's kind of neat. <laughs> um, and then here's where a decision we can make. Sometimes I, I think this is crucial to have. Sometimes yeah. I'll just remove it all together. Right. Sometimes I'll erase a portion of it mm -hmm. and keep it. But for this case, we're just going to keep it because I think it adds to the image a little bit. Okay. I'm not going to be super, super detailed with this. Just right. Cause it's going to well, take a demo. <laughs> yeah. It's going to take a while. Yeah. Um, anyway, you get the idea what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, let's just clean it up a little bit around here. Let's do that. Would this be easier with a stylus or is it fine with a mouse? It's fine with a mouse. You just mouse. get used to it. You know, I'm just not used to it. Stylus will work really well. Yeah. Um, I think that's good. Okay. All right. We'll go to uh, layer. We will do a new fill layer. We do a solid color. And for this picture, let's go to black again. Black mm -hmm. is always good. <laughs> there you go. Now, what's cool about this, say you uh, want to match the color of, say, this. Yes. Click on your double click your black, yeah, and see how it has that uh, eyedropper. You just yes. click it and it'll match that color, okay? So, if that's what you want, you know, that's a good color rather than being solid black, right? Know, we'll do that, that's good. 
Um, so then we would just have to fix around the green acro. Yeah, you'd zoom in. You'd have to hit the zoom in, spots. change your uh, change your size of your brush, and uh, you want to go the eraser tool and click on your layer and just get to eraser. Oh. You know, um, I don't like that. See, that's a very that's the hardness is up to one hundred percent. Yeah. I like zero or anything under 20, really. Um, mm -hmm. That'll give you a nice blend into your coral so it looks right. more natural. Yeah. And what you can do is change your opacity down to, say, 37 or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, if it's blurry, like there's a bokeh around the coral, you can blend it better mm -hmm. and it'll be a smoother transition. Um, let's see, there was a spot over here that was bothering me. Yeah, so you're still going to have to go over it. Um, that magic wand tool is not going to get everything. Yes. So here you're gonna, you're still gonna, um, you're still gonna get your eraser tool, and you're gonna, why? Oh, because my caps lock is on that. Huh? There we go. Yeah. So you're still gonna go over here and erase all these little specks and dots, and mm -hmm. um, so here, see how it's very harsh. It's a harsh line to me. Yeah. So you'd uh, feather that one a little bit. Yep. I would feather it, and I would also change the pace. He's already down. So that let's do ninety. That's good, 70. Let's go smaller. Yep, so I... Uh, oh, sorry, I'm on the wrong tool. Look at me. Oh, it was right. What am I doing? I'm thinking. I just lost focus. There we go. Two. Too big. Yeah, there we go. Feather a little bit. Make so you don't have such a hard line. Just make it blend more. Yeah. Because yeah. it's a hard line, it doesn't look natural at all. Yeah. And because my opacity is down, I'm having to go over it several times, but yeah. it's not a. To me, it's easier to work with doing that because you can kind of dial it in a little bit yes. better. Anyway, let's screw it out. Uh, that's not a bad picture. It's pretty good. Yeah, it looks good. So, it looks like I should put a black background on my tank. Yeah, let's just go to layer. <laughs> we'll do flatten image, and we will add um, layer mask filter. Did I do it? Yeah. Oh, all right. Um, shadows. Let's look at your shadows. Just a little bit. Mm. So right now, were you looking at the photo or were you looking at the background when you did shadows? The photo. Okay, the photo. I, I yeah. didn't even see a change. Oh, a little bit. Um, did it? Kind of, kind of. Uh, it's very, oh, very yeah. subtle. Yep, I see it now. Okay, yeah. thanks. I do that in Lightroom. Kind of just I press personal. this button right yeah. here and it shows me what the picture looked like originally and I can kind of compare. Yeah, it's kind of just personal preference, yeah. really. Um, but you see, we haven't touched any of the colors. We haven't messed with the colors. All we've done is get rid of some garbage in the background. Yeah. Man, I could go all day with But colors. that's my point is like a lot of times people are like, oh, well, you Photoshop that. I was like, yeah, well, I made it look better, but I didn't cheat. <laughs> yeah. So, I didn't um, add some crazy color. Screen. So I'm going to adjust some of the brightness on just specific corals. Okay. Like Ooh. the green ones that are always so hot. Yeah. Um, hardness. This is good. Oop, too bright. Too bright. <laughs> 270. That's abort. Good. Abort. That's good. That's a good happy medium okay mm, let's look at that guy are you doing the opposite of what i expected i thought you were going to turn the tone them down a little bit you're actually bringing them up some yeah yeah green's fine uh you can bring that up yeah uh let's see let's see this fish is dark down here uh, obviously i wouldn't focus on it but i'm just showing you what you can do yeah you can yeah look at that you're just punching it up with repetitive clicks yeah this guy right here, you can adjust it so you don't have to click it so much. Right. Another dark coral. Um, the fish's head. So that's something I would probably adjust. Yeah. Um, let's see where, oh, dang it, where, see, I'm getting used to it now. Someone from the UK is watching us right now. That's cool. Screen. Couldn't mm. do that 10 years ago. No, yeah. All right, let's adjust the fish head. All right. Um, you going to make them look the other direction? No, I'm no, kidding. I'm kidding. Just brighten, <laughs> brighten them up a little bit. Uh-oh, what am I doing? 
I don't know. Oh, something happened. You're in some kind of layer. Why can't I see it? What did I do wrong? Well, let's just start over. Okay. Delete. No, uh, oh, sorry. Uh oh, something's happening. Why isn't it working now? What did I do? I clicked a button somewhere. Someone from the internet is taking over. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's not good. There we go. All right. Um, okay, so what are you trying to do? You're trying to I'm do going something to, to the fish. Trying I'm to going to brighter? Well, the front of the head it has a little shadow. Yeah. So that I'm going to fix. Just the front. Well, maybe the belly. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. It looks better. And it's funny because all that data was in the photograph. We just couldn't see it. Yeah. So you're bringing it out, and then now the back is a little bit too bright. You're gonna, you know, you want to, oops, you want to uh, balance that out. So we'll go to multiply. Okay. Multiply makes it darker. Hide the layer. Thirty-four. That's too much. Fourteen. There you go. It's very subtle, yeah. but now it balances them back out. So the yeah. whole fish is, you know. Well, this stuff's very interesting to me. I have no idea if the audience enjoys yeah, it like I, I do. Know. There's a lot of work that but goes into some of this stuff. Of course. You know, um, if it was easy, we'd all be doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do that. We can do a little bit of that. I think that's good. Um, and if you really didn't like that coral, just get your clone stamp and say goodbye. <laughs> Say goodbye. You know, I've, I've done that with some of the pictures in the magazine. We've always, yeah. you know, get rid of some things that's going to be distracting. See, I mean, yeah. that looks good. I mean, that's that's not bad. Yeah. It was uh, Bacilla Pora. It had to go. It's blurry. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, there you go. I mean, it's not bad. Nice. Thanks, Mike. Get rid of some of this stuff right here. Yeah. I don't know what else. Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, you can definitely color grade it, but it's a, another podcast, I guess. <laughs> yes. I didn't want to show everybody everything at once. <laughs> yeah, that's not bad. I like it. Um, that's it, really. Okay, good. Yeah. Let's switch to our regular camera again. So, oh, look at that background. It looks so fake. That's because we've got it in streaming mode. <laughs> if uh, what I do with my phone? It's funny how. I, oh, there it is, right behind me. But a lot of times, I will set up the tank like this for the stream. It does seem like you know. This is where you want a filter. You know, uh, your Kelvin's not going to do anything. No, let me just change my lens. <laughs> yeah, your Kelvin is, you can put it in 10,000 all day long. It ain't going to matter. We're done with Photoshop, right? Yeah, unless you want to mess with it some more or somebody else has questions about it. Okay, I think it's kind of... Um inhibiting the streaming software so i'm going to close it i gotcha yeah see it's still very 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 terrible so you're gonna have to do some post-processing to remove some of the blues obviously your yes. oranges your reds your greens are always going to come out great the blues are going to be hard purples reds uh, so i don't know reds, if you guys but... heard but i actually changed the tank to crazy blue to make it challenging for mike <laughs> see this would be a good for the next podcast is yeah. then i could show how to bring the color back out of this yeah because yeah sounds good I made it impossible for him. No. <laughs> All right. We won't do that to you. How about I do this? No, no hold on a minute. Oh, you want to leave it like I'm that? Go back, right. go back one second. So the nice thing about LED lighting is that we can change it on the fly. We can just have this crazy... I mean, this looks so blue right now. It's insane. Oh, you know what? I bet my camera is even set to like some kind of Kelvin setting because I didn't change it. Oh, probably. I usually try to set that to auto when I'm about to do a stream and I forgot today. Yeah, but, never mind. Um, I was going to... A trick is to double stack your filters, and I was going to do that, but I don't have filters with me. You need one of mine? Uh, it, I don't know. I don't what think size fit. are you using? Like 47? Or I don't know. 60, 52? 62 millimeter? I might have a 62. Or I can just 
hold it in front. Yeah, you can hold it in front. Here's a nice giant one. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, that's. I think yeah. that's a 72. That'll work. I just hold it in front. Nice. So now everything's really dark, though, right? Because you're going through so much filter. Um. So I have a 60 millimeter. So the rule of thumb. And is, you're at a really high ISO at 1250. The, the rule of thumb is to always shoot higher than. Um, your shutter speed should be higher than what your lens is. So if you have a 60 millimeter, you at least want 60. Uh, uh, one speed. over 60, yeah. I like to kind of double it okay. just to ensure there's no blur. All right. Um, anyway, so right now it's not too bad. I got one over 125. Yeah, see, I don't need your fancy white <laughs> lights. I'm going to fix the Kelvin here. Yeah. It's not bad. I like it. It's still very blue, but yeah. It's very blue. I made it yeah. super insanely it's good. blue for it's, you. It's good, yeah. It was a test. <laughs> all right, so here's a, with all the lights at 100%, this will be better. This actually looks really clean to me. So that's 100% all channels. That's and I good. find that's actually real pretty look of the tank. It's very crisp. It may not look great on the stream because yeah. I got my Kelvin set up wrong. So it's this good. I am at. Let's see. It's gonna change. Where is auto? I can't see the thing. Eighty-three thirty on my Kelvin is what I match it at. I used to set up a custom white balance for everything. Mm -hmm. Now I don't. Um, the custom white balance was. And I was end up working too hard because every coral is going to have a different white balance. The depth of the tank matters. Um, Kelvin's a lot easier. I can just switch it on the fly, and I can get within a range. I, I kind of shoot a little bit underexposed and yeah. a little bit more on the bluish side of the Kelvin. There we go. Yeah, it looks normal. Yeah. I, like it. I like that what he does is he sets his camera up in a way to where it actually corrects a lot of it before he offloads it. Yeah, it, it makes a lot like easier. It saves like four extra steps. Because <laughs> yeah. I remember I would just take home all my blue pictures, hate them all, put them on my computer, and then one by one go into Photoshop and take the blue out. I'm like, okay, I can work with this. See, that my f-stop's going to matter too. So let's say I do f-36, and I need ISO, let's try 8,000. Wow. And that's gonna get every. I would every, think that'd be so grainy. It's gonna get everything in focus though, like yeah. all the other fish, the background. Yeah, you because know. of that crazy high up. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. What's his name? Did you see that whale go by? That was Spock. Okay, that's your. That's the oldest one, right? Yes. How old? Had her since two thousand four. Oh wow. Eighteen years. That's insane her house i had a pet snake for i don't know that was my childhood pet yeah i had that one for i think nine years maybe yeah what well, yeah that looks perfect everything's in focus that looks like an iphone picture now <laughs> now let's go down to <laughs> f i don't know three yeah the lower the f stop the tighter the focus will be so the like if you focused on the front of a zoanthid the front would be focused and the rest will be out of focus but by raising the f-stop, the rest of the zoanthid comes in. You're letting focus. more light in, too. So now my ISO to photograph that is 250. Mm -hmm. What was it, 8,000 before? Yeah. Makes a big difference. You get it less does. grain. Uh, but it's going to be a lot more bokeh and blur in the picture. Um, and I, your camera's an upgrade from the one I bought, because I bought your old one. Yeah. So I can't go to such extreme ISO. You I can. mean, uh, f-stops with mine, right? You can. The lens, uh, depending on the lens. Okay. Um, it just, yeah. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, the thing about f-stop, too, is so f2.8 is going to be really create a lot of bokeh when you're... Which is the black area on the side, when right? You're, yeah, when you're closer, but the further back you get, the more it's going to get into the focus. Mm -hmm. That's what's neat about it. So. Oh, wait. Bokeh isn't the blackness. It's more like a... The blur... Like a blur well, Say you edge. photograph your eyeball, yeah. and you're at 2.8. Yeah. f2.8, even f5, f9, you're going to get some blur around you know the face. Yeah. You might get the nose in focus, but... Everything behind you is gonna be more blurry. Yeah. So you do F thirty, then you're gonna get everything, everything in, in your face focused, including the background. Right. It's not very aesthetically pleasing. Sometimes right. it is. Yeah, a lot of time. I mean, think about it. They've been doing things with like FaceTime and portrait mode to make the background blurry on purpose. Yeah, see, so that background's very blurry. Yeah. I wish I could see that. But, yeah. Next time we hook it up. We'll just have. To, we'll stick them on your Instagram or something, or we'll stick them on mine. Yeah. 
Let me take a couple of pictures and show the examples. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's neat. You're branching so fast right now. Yeah. What Very else healthy. can we tell you guys? Um, if you don't have one of these little clips, I'm so orange right now. <laughs> Let me switch this. Nice tan, back. Mark. I know. I, I look perfect. Here. I changed it a little bit so I'm not so dirt. How's that look? All right. I look a little more normal. Mm. Uh, if you don't have one of these clips, I do sell them on my website. This is the one from Polyp Lab. I have a few left in stock, I think. Um, if you, worst case scenario, you can grab something like the Aquashella glasses. You can literally put it in front of the lens of your camera and shoot through the orange. And on this? My top down, uh, building an obsession makes, building an obsession, sorry, makes these. Mm -hmm. uh, these I can dip into the tank and take pictures of corals and dip into like that. Um, and that part holds on to the lens itself. Yeah, your camera will. So no matter how long the lens is, you can always work, right? Yeah, you can adjust it. So your camera, let's see if I'm going to get there. So, wait, where am I? There we go. So your camera goes down into there. Yep. And you can point it and dip it in, take pictures. Yeah, I'm big on taking pictures from above. Yeah. Your reef so always looks the best from this above. This will help a lot. Yeah, I'm actually thinking about ordering one of those. I would. make my own square one. I've used that I one. But I kind of want the round one. I don't know, and I don't make anything round, so I might have to just order one from somebody. Ben Sue makes those, but yeah. he's always sold out. But I've Oh, is he? I found out. Just, just email him or shoot him a text and say, hey, yeah. man, I need another tube. Yeah. What can you do? <laughs> and, you know, what? What? All right. Come here. Let's see if there's any questions. Come here. Uh, Jason has a comment. He says, I love isolated photos of individual corals using a macro lens, uh, but I wish I had a better depth of field, more polyps in focus. What's a good lens setting to achieve those? Depending on how close, <coughs> oh, shh, shh. Depending on how close shh. you are. Um, I would start out with... Um, let me reread that. Um, more polyps in focus. So obviously, you know, like with a hundred millimeter, it's you're so close to the coral, you're only getting one Jackie. polyp, uh, one polyp in there. Um, Sixty millimeter will get you more of that colony shot. Um, I would say f f eight through f twenty. Try that. You're gonna have to increase your ISO or bring in a lot more light. Great thing about ISO and internet is you're not going to see much of grain when you upload it to Facebook or a website because you're already web optimizing. It's such a small file anyway. You can get away with high ISO. All right. Um, yeah, try 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 a F8 through F20, and then play with the ISO to make the image brighter. I'm gonna change the tank back. It's driving me crazy. It looks so bad. It's just super crazy bright. So we'll go back to streaming. There we go. It looks <clears throat> that looks little. yellow. I know. It's funny how it does that. It's all because I changed the settings in the camera. Yeah. Let me switch it back to... How about this one? Take photos. Turn this off. That's got a little hint of blue. It's It looks off because I've been messing with it way too much during yeah, the show. fine, man. It's whatever. They know what it looks like. It's a reef tank. <laughs> yeah. Um, What are some specialty lenses you like to use? I have a 15 millimeter macro, and uh, it's really neat because the you can get such a giant. What I'm saying, a, I don't know. I, I say it. Um, if the coral's too big for me to photograph, I'll switch to that, and I get the whole coral in, in focus. And it in gets frame. the whole. So it's like a wide lens. Yeah, but it's a macro, of. so I can focus. Right. I can get right up on it, and I'll get everything. You but know? you get the whole thing. Yeah, not it's just really neat. Yeah. That's nice. So it kind of has a fisheye effect, basically? No, uh, no, it, it doesn't. Um, it doesn't do that. It'll have a little bit of warping on the side, but not not bad. I found it funny that you can take a fisheye, put it into like Photoshop or Lightroom, tell it what lens it is, and you can make Correct. it rectangular. Yeah, yeah. You can actually you, you make can it do a lot again. of different cool stuff. Yeah, you can actually change it up. All right. Um, do you want to tell them about your trick that you do when you're taking pictures of corals where you have extra lights inside your little... I, I mean, I can't. Or have you abandoned that? I have not abandoned it. Uh, it's, Here, it's ignore this dog. She's making you go crazy on camera. On <laughs> yeah, like what is this guy doing? I know he's like, what's he doing? He's petting this dog. I won't even show it. I'll just talk about it. Yeah. So it's a ring system that. The idea came from uh, a lot of macro photographers that do bugs and wilderness and all that use lights, and it's a dedicated light that you can hook to the front of something. Yeah. I took that that same idea and you know. You try to use it here. It's a lot harder. The lights are a lot different. It's just 
We have reflections. Well, yeah, but with that light, you don't get the reflection. You get an even, even lighting. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's perfect, perfectly lit coral, perfectly lit subjects. Um, and long story short, so I developed this idea a long time ago, and then another guy, Dom, Dom Castro, developed his version. I was like, hey man, try try these LEDs. It's yeah. a lot smoother. Your your blend's gonna be better. Yeah. And then we started collaborating and connecting with that, and he started using his knowledge, you know, he's really good with electronics. Uh, and then, you know, we started talking and kind of developed a prototype, a very good one. The yeah. problem is, is it's really expensive to yeah. produce, you know, and getting the parts for it and mm -hmm. trying to get people to do one-offs is almost yeah, it, nearly impossible. It's gonna be super niche. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, for sure. You think the hobby's niche? Then you start doing the exact specific shooting lens. I mean, it is hard. Very precise. Here, um, come a little closer. But that is the light you'll see me shoot with a lot. I don't sell it. I don't do anything with it. Maybe reach out to Dom. He might be able to help you. But yeah. again, the parts are really hard to get right now anyway. Um, He's the one I was talking about that edits his stuff on the iPad. Don't, don't, yeah, don't, yeah. We talk, we talk a lot. He uh, did a video yeah. of him editing. And he was like, camera's over his shoulder. And you couldn't see what he was doing. But you just saw him moving his mouse on his finger on the mouse pad. And I was like, you're editing everything with your fingertip? He goes, oh, yeah. And I was like, that's insane. Yeah. I want a tutorial. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was really, and because he has fantastic pictures. His videos are awesome. Yeah. You've seen those time yes. lapses? Yeah. Yeah, his time lapse videos. I told him that's where or his thing. Or when he zooms in and the zoom never seems to stop. Yeah. It just keeps, it's like, like, like he's going to zoom through I, the coral. I told him, man, that's your thing. You should really focus on trying to, you know, that with corals. And yeah. He's running with it. Um, nice. but yeah, the, the lights, I don't know if we'll ever get it off the ground and ever get it mass produced yeah i wish we would well you only need to make like five <laughs> but the, the, the main <laughs> issue with that though is building a solid product you know if say i get give you one yeah and you paid i don't know 300 bucks for it right a light goes out yeah. something happens something because it's all poorly not poorly made but it's not yeah. a professional it's yeah it's not yeah. a professional product right we can't guarantee anything <laughs> yeah that's the problem and yeah. you're paying all this money Right. I've had, I've probably, you know, LEDs aren't very expensive. I right. probably spent a thousand dollars on different combinations. Yeah, trying LEDs. to find that sweet spot. Yep, and and you know, they're all even now. Some of them are going bad. And, yeah. You know, but I, I am jealous though. When I'm doing pictures from above or whatever, I'm like, oh, I, I'm just thinking, Michael would do this. He'd have a light <laughs> over here. He'd have lights around. It, He'd it, be, everything be brighter. I'm like, why is my stuff so dark? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. I don't know. It, Dom, Dom's gonna hate me for saying this. Don't don't reach out to me. Reach out to Dom about questions. There you go. He's a Dom Castro on Facebook. <laughs> he's better at uh, explaining that stuff. What does he do for a living? Oh, oh, I never really get into that with him. We just always okay. talk about photos and yeah. He always shows corals. pictures. I think he's always going to a fish store to take his pictures. It seems like a lot of times. Yeah, it's um, a store near him. Yeah, I got into wholesalers a lot. Um, Ari. Um, uh, I've been going to Sutan for a long time. Yeah. I enjoy going there. Yeah, um, he has everything. Yeah, Sutan. Yeah, and then uh, Vibrant. I go to Vibrant now, and, and, you know, I started talking to Danelle a lot. and It's it's neat when they'll, you know, they'll reach out to me or call me up and say, hey, I got this really cool coral. Come photograph it. You know, yeah. you might want to get it before it, you know, leaves. And the thing is, I don't ever ask the clients. I don't care about the clients. I just, I care about the coral. I want to take a picture of it. Yeah. You know, you may never see the picture, though. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> you know, it, I, a lot of times I keep it for myself. You know, yeah. that or you might see it, you know, six months from now. Yeah. So it's been sold and chopped up and who knows. Yeah, no, Michael has taken pictures of my reef and I was like, send me everything. He's like, okay. And then he sends me like 18 pictures. I'm like, you took 200. But Where are the rest of my pictures? 18 good pictures. <laughs> well, yeah, they're, they're fantastic pictures. But it's like, I want the rest. Yeah. Because, you know, in a t reef tank, it's always changing. And so sometimes it's nice to have your older pictures to kind of see things that no longer exist or things have changed or you can see how much something you've grown in. It's, it's neat. Um, I mean, every tank I've ever photographed, I feel like I've, I've, gotten, I've gotten so personal with them because I'm looking at every little detail. And I yeah. remember your Walt Disney you had over here on the far yep. left. Yep. You know, I still got that picture, a little nub, you know. I have a little bit left over here that's happening. Yeah. And then I had a really nice home wrecker right here and 95 percent has gone, but... On the back of the dead skeleton, there is like one branch of life that is about half an inch. And it's I'm going to take that thing, I'm going to cut it, I'm going to pivot it and put it on the front yeah. so I can see it. Because I've been correcting 
the most minor of trace elements mm -hmm. and it's fixing it. I'm, I'm cooking my water with very specific things and it seems to be making a difference. I'm watching frog spawn open up, it that home good. wrecker yeah. stop dying, that uh, Walt Disney is kind of coming back. I mean, there's other issues, but it seems to be, I'm watching improvement of things that I d couldn't understand. Like for example, you've got this uh, Montefiore Digitata right here. Mm -hmm. It's super polyped out. For a while there, it wasn't. I couldn't figure out why. And by dosing very specific trace elements, I've actually made this thing polyp out. And in the very back of there, there's a big branch of a different version of that Montefiore. Yeah. The bottom branch, completely furry. The top branch was like a bone skeleton. <laughs> and now the top branch has polyp sticking out. It looks good. Yeah. And I didn't do anything. I didn't change the water or something that you could say, oh, well, you did elements. a water change. It's literally specific trace elements that were lacking. And so I'm in the process of ICP testing to find exactly what I got and then put in what's missing to get the water exactly right. And it's kind of a... I mean, I'm doing it because I'm working on a talk and uh, I'm doing it because it's something new for me that I've never done before. Yeah. So I'm kind of enjoying that experience. Yeah. Just like, you know, you're doing something you've never done before. You're like, okay, hey, by the way, I do want to talk about the, the big reef tank you saw in Long Island. Andrew Sandler's. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That reef. one there, you couldn't use your fantastic Man, lines. so that I, I attempted top downs on that. And I think he said uh, it was like nine or nine and a half feet deep. Yeah. And I'm on top of this massive tank yeah. i think it was 16 or 17,000 gallons 17,000 gallons but i think the front panel i think was 17 or i'm, I'm probably sorry if i'm getting it all wrong well something like 17 feet Come long closer. Get on, get but there. anyway i'm up go. there <laughs> and i can't even i can't i wanted to like lean over and really get into it but yeah. i could i had to hold my camera out and trying to dip oh. it in i got a few top downs yeah. uh i think I, I saw the rough draft of what's going to be published mm -hmm. if it stays somewhere the same. You'll see a couple top downs. It came out great. I used a 60 millimeter for that. Mm -hmm. I should have went with a 15, but the thing with the 15 millimeter, it's not autofocus. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to have to spend 20 minutes guessing. Um, yes. That tank was amazing. Um, if anybody ever gets a chance to go, the coolest thing to do is just sit down right in front of it and you're just immersed yeah. with how many fish and coral, every, yeah. every inch is covered yeah. in coral. It's really neat. That tank's um, come along really nicely. Boy, it felt like such a long time until he finally put coral in. I mean, it was like a year with all the fish and no corals. It, yeah, it, and everything's growing. So there's a there, there's a chalice that they got from Top Shelf, and I saw it at Top Shelf, and it was it was massive. Uh -huh. You see it in his tank, and it's a speck. It's, it's a frag. It's nothing. <laughs> it's a frag. Yeah, could you imagine putting a, a yeah. one inch frag in there of something? It yeah. would get lost. It's, it's what I always say on this tank. Like when I'm looking at stuff at the trade shows, I'm like, if I can't see it from three feet, what's the point? Yeah. And in his tank being so ginormous, he needs a colony. Yeah, he needs yeah massive and, colony. Yeah, and it has to grow to become big enough to where you appreciate it. But while you were there, I'm sure as you sat there looking, you'd see more and more things like oh yeah, oh, you'd have to go oh, back and oh. yeah, and there's all sides. You walk all sides of the tank and you see something different. Is that a full 360 degrees or is it three sides? Three sides. Three sides. Okay, three sides. So, but it's it's insanely clean too. Yeah. You know? Um, and was it difficult for you to f photograph that because the acrylic's so thick? Did no, it distort? No, not at all. It's four. I think it's four inches thick. Right. It was very easy to photograph. Through. Well, as long as you're shooting straight. That was. We didn't really talk about some of these things. Like when you're trying to shoot a tank, it's very important you shoot straight through the glass whenever you can. Yeah. If you're at a bad angle, it just the yeah. thickness of the glass or the acrylic being you know four inches thick that would then distort a fish and make it look ripple. Yeah, or just like stretched out or yes. something. You know, to a degree that matters. Uh, with his tank, I was anticipating how deep, I forget how deep it was. And, you know, I had a, I forget what I bought, uh, 70 to 200 or something, some crazy focal length lens. Yeah. And I used that for some of the fish. Um, of course, a very uh, 2470, 15 millimeter macro, 14 millimeter, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. I, I packed an arsenal. I'm surprised you, know. you need like a 300 millimeter lens. I, you know, that I should have. That would have helped also. Yeah, for the uh, long distance. You're yeah. like, well, it's going to be four feet away from me. There's some fish in the back that had, a, you know, they didn't want to come out to the front. They didn't want to, they weren't very, you know. Yeah. The they wanted fish. to hang out in the back and those are harder to get. But This um, one here is getting more and more friendly. Yeah. She's not hiding nearly as much. Um, one more thing I want to, I don't think I emphasized this earlier because I showed everything on the tripod. Ooh, that's, uh, what's your background? Go back to that. That's from Top Shelf. Uh, from Top Shelf? No, that's, no, that's LRO. Ann took that, That's right. right. That's Anne right. And that. so I said, that's my background. That is a beautiful background. So, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's a whole bunch of corals. Um, 
a friend of mine, one of the moderators of Club Meals Roof, liked that picture so much. He asked me for the original, which I went to her and she gave it to me. And it's his Visa credit card. That is cool. <laughs> he ordered a credit that card. It's all cool. corals. But I want to tell you, when you're taking pictures, I mentioned on the tripod, but if you're freehanding it, if you're dealing with reflections, one of my favorite things to do is to literally put the phone on the glass and then take that picture because there's no reflection that way because you've put this on that. And I had to do this at Comic-Con. Last weekend, I'm looking at all these amazing statues and every one of them surrounded by four pieces of acrylic or, yeah, even a fifth piece on top. Mm. You know, it's just, it's a cube. And the reflections are vicious. Yeah. And all the photographers walk around like you with their nice cameras and they got all their backpacks yeah. and all their lenses and their, <laughs> their flashes. And yeah. they're just like, they're trying to shoot and they're doing this and they're trying. And it's like, yep, these reflections. And they're like, oh my God, the reflections are so bad. And the thing is they can't turn off the lighting in the hall, even though you think they could, because then you can't see the statues because they don't have like lights on each one. It's literally oh, okay. the, the convention hall lighting. So I would go up to the acrylic box and I put my phone directly on it Yes, I'd be closer to the subject, but I didn't have a reflection with my hand, my shirt, this lady walking by with a big white bag that's completely reflecting off the <laughs> acrylic. I mean, I saw it was so frustrating. And the benefit of pictures versus video with a photograph, you may not see the reflection as much. But when you're sitting there and you're actually taking the picture and people are moving, you can see all that activity on your screen. You're like, oh, my God, this is going to be terrible. But then when you hit the shutter button and you get the picture, they're not quite as visible as a moving yeah. object is. Before I had that top-down tube, uh, I used to shoot above the water. Just hold the camera above the water. Oh, right. Through so, the ripples. Yeah, through the ripples. You know, but Brad, Brad Best said, I used to go there like midnight. You know, just yeah. the time that worked out for both of us. And <laughs> I'd be trying to photograph his corals, and he would have cardboard boxes blocking some of his lights. Yes. And, you know, it'd be a whole, yeah, it'd be crazy. Yeah, it's funny. That's I mean, what I was talking about. You need like a walking shower curtain behind you yes, where it creates a something. big barrier that as you move, it follows you yeah. around. Yep. I think we should do that. <laughs> we um, should make one and then go to the I'm Dallas World Aqu Aquarium wearing that and yeah. go take pictures of all the big tanks. Walk around Aquashella like that, yeah. Or Aquashella, yeah. yeah. Fit in, fit in. Um, I think that's it. I mean, we covered a lot. You're, you're talking about Aquashella, right? Aren't you? Or yes. is that MACNA? Or yeah, I'm both? talking on Sunday. And okay. I'm talking yeah. at MACNA. So any, what so, topics are you on over? Aquashella, I think, is my emergency talk. And then MACNA is going to be ICP testing and mm. fixing little tiny things in your water to make your reef happier. Patience. So, within the, a lot of yeah, patience. It is. And, man, it's so... Uh, <laughs> the hardest part for me right now, I'm, in a, I'm actually in a frustrated mode. I... Last Monday, before I left town, I took a water sample and I sent it to ICP. And they never got it. Oh. It still hasn't arrived. <laughs> and then last Monday, you know, earlier this week, I sent another sample, which is due to arrive today by 9 p.m. on a Saturday. Now, they are aware my water sample is coming and they actually are going to run it like tonight. Because I, I have no, I'm, I'm playing with stuff with no data. Yeah. And I, the next sample I'm sending on Monday again. I'm doing it every Monday. So I'm thinking I'm just going to FedEx the darn thing. That way I know it gets there in a day and I don't have to sweat this thing. Because I, I need some information. I think that's why I never set back up an aquarium. I, when well, we yeah, but I'm going so to when we, when we moved, uh, my tank crashed. Far. You know, now it's just all about lawn. I did my grass. So I just, I don't test. I just throw everything How's on there. How's your lawn doing in this Texas weather? Uh, great. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Are you watering it illegally? <laughs> no, I'm not watering illegally. <laughs> Who's gonna tell? <laughs> Everybody here. <laughs> yeah, no, um, we we do have certain restrictions oh, for it's watering. Oh, bad right now. The drought, and, and with it being so hot and the drought going on, it it really is a challenge. I mean, mm. my lawn looks baked, and I mean, it's been like 105, 104, 111. It's awful. It looks good though. It's still, oh. it doesn't look. It's crispy and I crunchy. Just cut it yesterday because I thought you might come over today. <laughs> I'm not looking at your yard. He's a big lawn guy. No. Okay. Um, last words of advice? Last thoughts? Things we didn't touch on that you wish I'd asked? Uh, this, the people. What do the people want to know? I mean, I don't... All right, let's see if there's any more questions. You can ask whatever you want. I'll answer anything you want. Just ask. Uh, Jason says, thanks. You're welcome. Yeah, one person said, uh, if you want to get something in focus, you can try focus. Do you want to explain focus stacking? Or stand um, over here, though. Stand over here. I can see you. If you really want that photo. I mean, yeah, that's true. If you really want the photo, you can focus track. I do a lot of focus stacking. Um, it kind of depends on the coral. If it's a really nice, nice coral and I want everything in focus, I won't shoot an IF stop. 
So what's a good coral for you that you're talking about, like an Acanthilia? No, it's super rainbow, something super unique. Uh, um, but not something small like an Acan. I mean, you can. I mean, it's, uh, it depends. So, uh, there's different ways you can focus stack. The easiest way is shoot at a high f-stop, and you get your manual focus, and you hold the shutter down and twist it, and it'll just click, 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 click. Oh. And then the software that I use, uh, Zarine Stacker, it'll piece it all together. The thing about with grain and ISO and noise is the grain in an image is never in the same place at one time. So when you stack them, it, you're going to need a clear picture regardless. Yeah. It's just a lot more work. Um, it just depends. I mean, if I'm in a control situation, yeah, I'll focus stack. If I'm at a frag show, most of the time I'm not focus stacking just because I don't want to take the time. And right. there's people around. You know, I don't get in anybody's way, ruin sales. Uh, I have a rail. I use an automated rail sometimes for some of my bugs where it'll just move at like, I don't know, the width of a human hair. It'll click. click. You don't even crazy. see it moving. Come back in an hour and you're like, oh, it's, it took Oh, it's 400. that automated. Yeah. See, you, I think you came over with one once and I just thought you were going to like twist a knob and go like forward a millimeter at a time. That was the manual one. Yeah. I upgraded since then. So this one is all digitized and it's called a Cognos stack, I think. Wow. By Cognosis. But That'll take 400 pictures if I want it to mm-hmm. of a fly head, you know, something like that. Yeah, yeah. It, stacking is just a whole, whole different thing. Um, it's good when it's good, but not all the time. All right. Let's see. Yeah, nobody asked any questions. <laughs> I mean, there's com- some comments. But wait, what's, what's that? Kind of a dumb question right there. But when I take photos of roof tanks at a public aquarium, the pictures come out to be unclear and blue. Mm hmm unclear i don't understand the unclear part maybe it's maybe it's you're not straight with the glass maybe mm-hmm. um if you're if you're at an angle that's going to definitely affect it uh if it's too blue shoot kelvin try try 700 kel- 7000 8000 9000 yeah. if not stick a filter on there use like an amber Orange isn't really great because it blows everything out. I know a lot of people use those orange glasses. This is the one I have. You can see it's kind of orangish. Yeah. And it makes a difference. Let me see. I'm trying to... <laughs> when people use these orange glasses, they'll... I mean, this is, works. They put their phone in there, take a picture. The problem with these is it... It's rounded. It, but that, <laughs> but it'll blow out any oranges, any reds. Yeah. The whole picture just looks orange. It's right. not very accurate for a good representation. The Polyp Lab, I know Mark has this. Yeah. This is pretty good. It works. It works great. Um, almost the same. But I've been using that thing for years. Yeah, it's a lot better than using those glasses. I would recommend. Right. Yeah. I'm just saying, in a pinch. Yeah. You can Not necessarily this brand. I don't yeah. understand. These work great. Right. Um, and then of course, like an amberish. Yeah, uh, this is the 85B from Hoya. Yeah, that's good. And um, I bought one after Michael came over. I bought one for every lens I own, and they all have one. That way, I would never have to switch them. I would just yeah. literally I had on every lens, yeah. and then if I don't need, I just take it off, you know, and yeah. shoot what I gotta shoot. Yeah, and you can still use that and shoot in Kelvin. You can just turn it all the way down to like two thousand. Yeah, and just play with it a little bit. It's all it's, yeah. it's, it's a lot of just. I tend tweaking. to shoot at a weird number, fifty-eight eighty Kelvin. Yeah. That's my number. Bluish, I seem to like. very blue. If that's what you like, stick it, with it. It somehow makes it look right. I yeah. can be looking at a tank that's bluish because I didn't change the lighting. And I and then I use that filter. But you see how the lighting makes a big difference in oh, pictures. Absolutely, that's you know? what I'm saying. If you can adjust your lighting before you start, yeah, you're already making the battle less. When difficult. I used to, it's been a while, but I used to travel a lot and photograph in tanks, and I used to, I used to have them all change it to a you know a better spectrum that I could photograph more comfortably in. Yeah. Once I got a little more experience, I quit doing that, and I right. just photograph it whatever you're whatever comfortable. It is. Yeah. That's how I want to photograph it. Yeah. You know, if you like it more blue, great. If not, great too. I remember when I, I had certain settings in that Fuji I was talking about, mm-hmm. and I could go to fish stores because this fish stores just started to set up tanks with all blue. Yeah. And I made a setting so I can go into one store and just take pictures, and then the other store was blue. I went to that setting, and I was set for because they all had pretty much the same blue. Yeah. You know, there was there was only a few choices. Yeah. Back then, now there's so many choices. But if you know if you have a picture you're not happy with, there is a chance you can fix it with, um, like in Photoshop or Lightroom or, or yeah. something where you can clean it up afterwards. Yep. And that goes for video as well. Video yeah. can be corrected you know, in Final Cut Pro. When people post videos, slow. they're like, "I'm gonna post a video to show it's accurate." You can do the same thing you can with photos. You can tweak yeah. that video and oh, yeah. add all kinds of color to it. Oh yeah, you can definitely you know? enhance one and, and add vibrancy or whatever. Yeah, which is misleading. And for me, I'm trying to just get 
I'm trying to get as close to what you see in person so that when you come over, you're like, oh, that's pretty yeah. cool. I've and they're learned, not like, well, I've you had something a, that was glowing. I'm like, no. <laughs> I've learned to have an acceptable range because yeah. every monitor, every phone, every device can be different. Right. You know, it's it's hard to get it exact. Yeah, it really is. All right. Any more I questions? Good. We Yeah, there's no more questions. Okay. I think what we're going to do is just going to wrap up here. I'm yep. going to go through my spiel, and then we'll end this thing. Yep, 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 so yep. I want to remind you guys, today is water test Saturday. I am about to test my tanks, make sure the water is good. I did a water change on Kate's Reef last night. Changed out about 10 gallons of water and cleaned the sand bed up because it was bothering me. And uh, I need to test the water now. I got to check the reef as well. Hopefully, I'll get some ICP results tonight which would be really nice because I'd really like to know what's been going on with everything I've been dosing lately. And uh, if you are not testing your water, and listen, I accuse you guys of this all the time because I know you're not doing it. I tell you to test every week and you're like, yeah, yeah, and you don't. <laughs> water tests save lives. If you will test your water, you will know what's wrong with the water and you can make some corrections. And that way you won't say what's going on with my tank because you've already handled it. I talked to someone just recently on the phone and they said, yeah, I never test. I just look at the tank. And I'm like, you own test kits. And I'm like, yes, I do. I'm like, then use them. So the rule is once you open a test kit, it's only good for a year. And even if the bottle is half full because you didn't barely use it, <laughs> it's still expired. So you need to replace it with a fresh kit. So make sure that you are using those kits and using them up and knowing what your parameters are. If you can log it, put it in some kind of an app. I like Reef Trace. I recommend that one. If you want to use a spreadsheet, if you want to write it in a journal, I don't care. But having that information will let you track things. And as your tank is improving, you can see the numbers and see when your tank was doing well. And then when things are going badly, you can look at the numbers and you can totally see where you need to get back to because you've got some kind of a reference point when things were perfect. Sort of a snapshot of the past when things were great. And that way you can go ahead and make those corrections. You can adjust your dosings if needed. You can stop dosing if you're putting in too much. And that way your reef can thrive and be happy and pretty and not be something that is a battle. Because we want to enjoy the tank and relax. We don't want to be stressed and worried and frustrated and throwing a lot of money at a tank trying to fix problems that we could have corrected early on if we just made some water or completed some water tests to make the most minor of adjustments. Other than that, uh, there will not be a live stream next weekend because we will be at Aquashella, which is here in Dallas. If you haven't made plans, buy a ticket. And if it's sold out, well, I'm sorry, I should have said something sooner. But, <laughs> but uh, it will be a fun show to go to because it's not just salt water. There's fresh water, there's lizards, and there's snakes, and there's spiders. Yeah, and, it's, and there's, yeah. it's everything. Plus, there's art and music, and there's drinks. I mean, so, I mean, you're going to have a good time. And it's Saturday and Sunday taking place in Dallas. And you can find them on Facebook. All right? Bye, guys. I hope you have a nice weekend. See ya.